Love live life. Life can be glorious and hideous. Stick your feet to the ground, but don't think you are counted out. Don't let the wind pull you and tear you apart. Let yourself live freely and love, and you'll be happy. No limits, just to keep on. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Iron Will podcast with me, Shane Warner, and John Chase. So what this podcast is all about is we are trying to get stories from people that have been through a traumatic experience in their lives and came out a different person. Yeah, they have all created an Iron Will. So what is an Iron Will? A burning determination that cannot be stopped or hindered by anything. Willing to do anything to get a desired outcome. Extremely resilient. So what we like to say is we like to say, just keep punching. (laughs) Yeah. So sit back and relax and we're going to start the show. You know, it's the combination of having a lot going on and having a TBI because... Mm. And then I forget stuff and I don't mean to. So it's like trying to keep up with everything. But I'm trying to get more organized nowadays. And uh, I've been working on like, uh, what do you call them? So like systems and Mm -hmm. like planners and (laughs) trying to do better because I'm in school right now too. I went Mm -hmm. back to school. So um, when I, I was doing like the fall semester, I just... It was really hard. It was really hard to keep up with life and school and everything. And so I felt really behind and I got really, really, really stressed out and overwhelmed. Yeah. Well, My new classes start on Monday. So I'm like, oh, wow. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. It's going to be totally better this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. at least. So we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, for sure. Especially since you're so busy and all that's going on. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm so glad to be able to. I try to, I, I'd love to. It's an honor. I'm, awesome. I'm thankful. So today we have on Krista Bell Braden on the podcast with us. And Krista Bell is actually the first person I start, started following um, from the brain injury community. Mm. And um, it was, it must have been like eight years ago. So, but she is a singer songwriter and she also. Um, host the podcast hope survives and so i'm just gonna let krista bell kind of introduce herself and tell all all of you what she's all about (laughs) okay take it away yeah thank you so much shane i did not realize that i was the first person that you found that (laughs) means a lot to hear that you know um so yeah i am chris well like you said i I'm a singer-songwriter. I actually started writing music after my TBI. Oh. I never wrote songs before it happened. And oh. so that kind of became like therapeutic for me Yeah, in yeah, terms great. of the recovery. And I never really expected to be a professional singer-songwriter. <laughs> I was just like going to brain injury rehab, trying to get through the day and writing songs about it. And hey, from well, there, it some just of the grew. Best, the best stuff comes from the Yeah. You know, it's personal. Yeah. It has it has purpose behind it. There's passion behind it. So I, yeah, li- I like that. It just grew from there. And uh, I started to get invitations to sing and speak at different events and venues and churches. And from there, it, it grew. I was able to study music in college. And I started touring hmm. full time back in 2016. Huh. And I would go on tour and visit brain injury support groups. Mm-hmm. And, and I, all the cities that I'd go to, I would do concerts for brain injury awareness and do like mis- m- ministry work. Mm-hmm. So going into like shelters or prisons oh. and doing like inspirational concerts and just sharing hope. And that's really kind of my, my heart behind everything yeah. is sharing hope because so many people just feel so hopeless all the time. And Mm -hmm. I remember what it's like to feel hopeless. Yeah. So that's the motivation behind everything. And 
I have Hope After Head Injury, which is the online community for brain injury support. And I have a podcast, like you said, called Hope Survives. And that's my podcast about brain injury. Mm -hmm. I also have another podcast called Declaration Life. And that one is about Christian living and just inspiration. And Mm. I interview women about their stories on overcoming. And so I've interviewed chronic illness warriors, other brain injury survivors. I've interviewed people who've survived like serious abuse yeah. and mm-hmm. cancer and all sorts of things. And so we'll, we'll just like have our, faith-filled yeah, conversations. That's, that's more of the direction we've gone. Yeah. Um, like we could interview people exclusively that have had a brain injury, but we more focus on like trauma survivors mm-hmm. just people that have have been able to uh, overcome yeah. just really tough things and mm-hmm. some like just like you're saying with your podcast it's like all the same all the same type of people like it's awesome yeah it's been really great great so how many i know you ha- have had multiple brain injuries um so can you tell me about them and how they affected you and what was the hardest one? Well, the hardest one was definitely the first one because that was the worst one. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what brought me into having a TBI. The first brain injury was, it was over 10 years ago, so it's been a while. And I had a accident from playing a game at youth group. And it was a running game. And when I ran, all the boys ran behind me and rushed the other team. And I ended up running and hitting my head straight into the cement wall. Ooh. And my head bounced off the floor a couple Ooh. times. And yeah. so we think we had, we think I had at least three hits to my head in that yeah. one moment because mm-hmm. I whacked it on the wall and then I whacked it on the floor on one side and I whacked on the back of my head on the floor. Yeah. So it was multiple hits oh, at the same time. And then I was unconscious. And when I came to, I seemed totally like fine. Like fine. I wasn't really showing concussion signs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like I, everyone thought I was fine. And then I started to get worse and worse. And it turns out my brain was swelling up. So we didn't know anything about concussions or brain injuries. But what happened was I didn't get treatment. So my brain swelled up to the point where three days later, I had blurry vision. I was falling over. I couldn't walk straight. I had to, I couldn't hold conversations. Like it got worse and worse to the point of, Mm -hmm. yeah, to the point of not functioning. And so from there, like I was at school, like, and I just, I was in high school and I just like felt like I couldn't, could not function. And so the nurse, like, you know, we knew I probably had a concussion, but, but we didn't know what that meant. So, so I, we got sent to like an emergency appointment with the neurologist. And then the first neurologist I saw just didn't really know much about brain injuries, unfortunately. And so they were like, you'll be fine in a couple of weeks. Just go home and do nothing. The mm-hmm. CAT scan that we got was actually blurry and the doctor didn't tell us or get it reordered. Mm-hmm. So he never even got to see the CAT scan with contrast. Um, so we don't really know. There's a whole lot of unknowns as to kind of what was going on earlier, Mm -hmm. but what we do know is I did not get better and I had to relearn how to get dressed. I had to relearn how to take a shower. Like it was like everything, but we weren't, I wasn't in inpatient rehab. So like I didn't, we didn't have help. Like my mom had no idea. Just, she just knew my mom was a kindergarten teacher and I was literally functioning like one of her students. And she also Mm. used to teach classes for adults with down syndrome. And she said like, it was like, I was like a small child, but I was Mm. also exhibiting like similarities to her students that she would have with -hmm. disabilities. And so she kind of had to figure out how to take care of me. And then, so it was like the first couple months, it was just like, she couldn't work. We were at home. It was just like, she was having to take, thank, thankfully my dad had a job and everything, but she was having to just take care of me 24 seven, help me in the bathroom, help me get dressed. Like, and eventually we did find a brain injury rehab, but it was a long process. And that first neurologist, like 
as I continued to see him, when my mom would say I was having troubles, he said she was just overprotective because I looked fine. Yeah. And she was like, well, she can't do math. And before her brain injury, she was really good at math. Like, mm. And he said, well, she's a girl. She doesn't need to know math. Wow. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. it was like, ugh. but yeah. so that was the hardest one, the first one. And it was a lot of years and all the rest of them, I feel like have just kind of built from that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like I had really bad balance. And so I would, I fell down, like I tumbled down a flight of stairs oh, and like yeah. with the gravity, like whacked my head and on the side. You oh, think it's due to the fact that you had the first brain injury, right? Absolutely. Okay. There's oh. no doubt in my mind because it was like balance issues and spatial awareness. And I would fall and I would whack my head on things, you know, and it just, like I slipped on the ice, which anyone could slip on the ice, but, but I think it affected me more because I had already had a brain injury. So my nervous system was like heightened and sure. sensitized. Yeah. So when I would fall and I just, I didn't even, this was one of the brain injuries. I didn't even hit my head, but I whacked the side of my body so hard when I slipped on the ice, I had a bruise all the way down my side, oh, but I didn't think I had a concussion because I didn't physically hit my head, yeah. but I learned that you can get a concussion if your brain is jarred, jarred enough. enough. So yeah. like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's just been like a whole bunch of different things over the years and, um, just a long journey. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. When was your most recent one? It was December, 2019 okay. was the wow. most recent one. However, Last week, I whacked my head <laughs> under my desk, and ever since then, I felt really off. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a whole on concussion or if it's just like mm -hmm. a flaring up of symptoms. But yeah, <laughs> wow. So I want to backtrack a little bit and find out what you were like when you were growing up. Like, uh, what do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have two younger sisters. Okay. Um, so so where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Delaware. Delaware. What's there to do in Delaware? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the lower half of the state has beaches, but oh, okay. we lived up in northern Delaware. And that's mm -hmm. actually where I had gotten hurt. But we actually, my family moved two years at three, two, two years hmm. after my TBI. We moved to Pennsylvania. Um Okay. To give me a fresh start in a new school, Pennsylvania special education program is much better okay. than oh, okay. Delaware's. Yeah. And um, the do I was getting bullied really, really bad mm -hmm. at the high school that I went to yeah, after right. my brain injury. Like they, the kids were just making fun of me because of my TBI. They'd yeah. bump into me in the hallways, Jeez. think it was funny that I'd fall over. They just were really awful. And the I had an IEP after my brain injury, but the the teachers were told, like had a meeting with my parents and my mom said like the teachers were crying because they couldn't control the bullying like mm -hmm. they couldn't do anything yeah. about it so my parents were like she needs a new start like yeah. a new school so I repeated a grade in high school at mm. my new school so they didn't know I was repeating so oh, yeah you know what yeah. I'm not I I don't get angry too often but that's the kind of stuff that yeah. angers me yep. always uh just oh man I don't like that kind of stuff I'm so glad I'm not a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> or I'd probably be in jail by beating up a bully. <laughs> so I've heard people say um, about brain injury. Well, my brain injury was a severe one. Um, so mm -hmm. I have physical symptoms also, but I've heard people say about brain injuries that it's the invisible injury. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, what's his name said that? Uh, oh man, what's his name from Australia? Oh, um, yeah, he said we yeah. we we interviewed a guy um a while back, and he he said that he said that exact same yeah. thing. That uh, you might not notice it by looking at him at all because he walks straight. He you know all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, he but he had multiple. He can function like normally, mm -hmm. and so if you just seen him walking down the street or whatever you wouldn't know but yeah. um it's the other symptoms that are the hard hardest part to deal with mm -hmm. yeah well, well yeah because you still get like when you get overwhelmed 
and and all that. I mean, that's that's much harder for you. Um, I know that is, you know, for shame.